Hey, what's up everyone? First and foremost, happy Juneteenth. I am Carmen Wong. I am a Guyanese-born poet, playwright, teaching artist, scholar of literature, and I am here today to talk a little bit about our history and to help us celebrate. I think that it is a very um, instrumental time in our year for us to come together whether we really fully conceptualize what Juneteenth is or even have the breadth of knowledge about where we come from in our origins. I am a proud Howard University graduate and I am currently an MFA candidate in creative writing poetry. I was raised in Queens, New York and I'm out here in New Orleans right now. For those who might not be familiar with Juneteenth, Juneteenth is a holiday. It is a day for us to celebrate ourselves, a day for us to think about liberation, to think about the ways in which we have emerged as people to seek our own liberation and the ways that we do it communally. So honestly, it's a very long history and I think that it's very crucial for us to learn our history, Black history, at a younger age so that we can fully engage with ourselves much later in life. And that's one of the things that I work on. I am a scholar of uh, primarily African American literature. Um, I am moving towards Caribbean literature and literature of the African diaspora. What that means is that I'm concerned with the dispersal of African people. When we talk about forced migration, how did we end up in the U.S., in places across the Caribbean, in places all over the world? Because we have a shared connected identity, although we have our own intricacies um, and our own customary practices, right? But sometimes what the colonial world will teach us or make us believe about ourselves is that our practices aren't valued, that who we are is not to be remembered. There's a lot of erasure that happens. And so really briefly, quick synopsis, because you know there is so much that we have to talk about when we talk about Black American history, um, but it's important to recognize this holiday as um, a pivotal point in our history where Black Americans were able to um, finally, some for the first time, see what um, it meant to be um, free people, right? Um, we're talking about the 1800s. We're talking about um, the Civil War era, right? We're talking about the post-Civil War era, or right? around um, when the war had ended. And we're talking about um, even going back to Lincoln and thinking about the Emancipation Proclamation, which some people um, know or consider it as a authority or, or documentation um, that said that African Americans were set free. In reality though, um, that was really just a governmental way for our presidency to um, preserve the union. And so when we think about what democracy looks like in 2020, we have to go all the way back to the 17, 1800s and realize what that was founded on. And so when we think about the Confederacy, what, what exactly was the Civil War, right? We had a bunch of con Confederate uh, states, primarily in the South, who were for slavery. They looked at it as a very economically sustainable thing in our society. And who was at the end of that stick? That was Black Americans. And so with the proclamation of Juneteenth, um, that became the day that um, many African Americans were, for the first time, able to be regarded as free, full human beings, right? Um, and, and we even have to take it even back to, to us being seen as property, um, to us being three-fifths of a human. So essentially, um, when we even think about, you know, there's some people who say that, that Black folks aren't political, but in our being, right, when we think about, um, you know, legal responses and, and the judiciary system here, um, and the ways it has always worked against us, right? Whether it has criminalized us or enslaved us. 
And so today, um, it's really a day for us to seek joy on the road to justice as we see it playing out in 2020. Um, one thing that is extremely important for me to say and for us to recognize is that we're strictly talking about Chattel slavery, right? And we're talking about Chattel slavery in the U.S. And we have to make sure we get that, um, you know, right because... Slavery still exists. It exists systemically. We see it in the classrooms. We see it in our boardrooms, right? We see it all across. And then in many areas of the world, right? And and, and I, I believe in Pan-Africanism. And when we see it in many areas of the world, it is still occurring even at the state of Chattel slavery. So this is a day for us to recognize our history, for us to inform ourselves and each other, and to be in community. It's important for us to know where we've come from and for us to to understand as a community where we're headed and because I am a writer um, and because I do study literature I know that none of this is new I know that um, we have documented our beings and we will live on forever and today I want to read a poem um, from for from uh, Haki Marabuti if anyone is familiar with him um, poet activist and this is coming from the black poets um, an anthology by Dudley Randall and this is called the primitive taken from the shores of mother Africa the savages they thought we were they being the real savages to save us from what our happiness our love each other their Bible for our land introduction to economics Christianized us raped our minds with TV and straight hair, Reader's Digest and bleaching creams, Tarzan and Jungle Gym, used cars and used homes, reefers and napalm, European history and promises, those alien concepts of whiteness, the white being of what is not against our nature, this weapon called civilization, they bought us here to drive us mad like them. And this final poem I'm going to share today is from our sister, our poet, our mother, Audre Lorde. It's called Litany for Survival, A Litany for Survival. For those of us who live at the shoreline standing upon the constant edges of decision, crucial and alone. For those of us who cannot indulge the passing dreams of choice, who love in doorways coming and going in the hours between dawns, looking inward and outward at once before and after, seeking a now that can breed futures like bread in our children's mouths so their dreams will not reflect the death of ours. For those of us who were imprinted with fear, like a faint line in the center of our foreheads, learning to be afraid with our mother's milk, for by this weapon, this illusion of some safety to be found, the heavy-footed hope to silence us. For all of us, this instant and this triumph, we were never meant to survive. And when the sun rises, we are afraid it might not remain. When the sun sets, we are afraid it might not rise again in the morning. When our stomachs are full, we are afraid of indigestion. When our stomachs are empty, we are afraid we may never eat again. When we are loved, we are afraid love will vanish. When we are alone, we are afraid love will never return. And when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard nor welcomed. But when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak remembering we were never meant to survive. I think that these poems are extremely important and I hope that we find some power in it today because especially in American history, um, as someone who studies history through the lens of literature, there is a lot of erasure that happens when it comes to black, indigenous, and people of color. 
and we are told that we are less of what we are. And I'm here to say that we are full human beings, that today is a day of celebrating that I see you and that we should see each other. And if we haven't already, let's start today. I think for many of us, we are recognizing that and I'm proud to see that. And I'm proud to be here and to celebrate Juneteenth with each of you. Thank you so much. And if you liked or enjoyed any of the conversation that I might have sparked today or any of the readings that I shared today, please follow my literary Instagram page at what you read in the series. I'm always out here reading from things, sharing whatever knowledge I have every day out the air. Please lock in, engage with me. I love it so much. Thank you.